let me we need to take care of a few things. Thank you for being here this morning. One, we, so far, we have 187 soul winners here. Wow. So Praise God for that. Yeah. And uh, that's, that's a great, great thing there. All right. So the, just to remind you, schedule for today, we have soul winning. And then you come back at 1230. We should have 30 large pizzas here. Hopefully that's enough. And, uh, and not, well, we'll figure something out. We'll send some to KFC. But uh, we have a very large pizza coming at 12.30. We have two jump houses that are going to be back here for the kids. Now look, the jump houses are for the kids, all right? I'm going to show you this, the kids get going there. And then at 5, at 2 p.m., we'll have our service. And today, we're going to have Pastor Logan Robertson from New Zealand uh, doing the 10-minute uh, sermon. And then Pastor Dave Bursons from Prescott Valley will be doing the bowling sermon. And then at 5 p.m., we have a youth activity and a singles activity. And uh, if, if you're a teenager, 13 years and up, that's going to youth activity, we need you to meet in the break room at 5 p.m., all right? And we guys are going to go do laser tag. And that, that'll be fun. I think you'll have food or something there, too. If you're a single, all right, you're 18 years and up, you've never been married, um, we need you to meet in the foyer at 5 p.m. And I think you're going to go do miniature golf or something like that. And uh, if you are a single lady and you haven't signed up, you can sign up, all right? Sign up for the, the for that day, I'm just joking. Obey them that have the rule of you, or something like that. So anyway, uh, but, but you can help us with that. Be careful, we got a, a hose coming down the middle here. We're filling the baptistry, so just be, uh, be careful with that. Be watching for that. I need to meet with the Washington delegation today after lunch. Once everybody's on pizza and stuff, I don't know what we're going to meet. If you're from Washington, Vancouver area, raise your hand. Portland, something like that. Raise your hand. Okay. Um, all right. So we're not going to get in my office. But we'll, we'll meet maybe in the break room, all right? And I uh, just need to talk to you guys for a few minutes. Everybody's been complaining about your group. So you guys are rude and you make messes. And all that. All right, so we're, I need to talk to you guys uh, maybe just after lunch sometime. Once, once everybody's cleared out of the break, break room, we'll go in there. And have a quick meeting, and uh, let's see, I need to make sure that I'm not forgetting anything. Okay, what we need to do a count of salvations. Uh, we haven't been getting a, a good count for salvation, so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to have you raise your hand and tell me how many salvations you've had. Now, we had a group go out on Wednesday, not a, a, not as big as now, but uh, if you went out on Wednesday and you had uh, anybody say, can you just raise your hand? If anybody in this section has the body how many do you have? Two. Two? Okay, Rebecca, did you raise your hand? Yep, you one. Okay, uh, Brother Aaron? One. One. Brother Evan? Five. Brother uh, Matt? One. One. Okay, anybody else in this section for, for Wednesday? Wednesday? The other people have three more. Three. Are they not the ones that are, that are on here? <coughs> we have a total of seven. Okay, that's everybody, that's all on Wednesday then? Okay, anybody in this section that went on Wednesday that wasn't counted? Yes? Uh, Brother Peter, how many did you guys have? Okay. And and Valerie's number also? One. You had one? Okay. Alright. You guys had a couple? We had one. You had one? Okay. You guys are going with me today, both of you. Alright? You're in trouble. So. <laughs> <laughs> you had one? Okay. Alright. Anybody else in this section? This section? Alright. Anybody in this section for Wednesday? Wednesday salvation? Wednesday? Anybody in that section? Wednesday? Alright. Thursday. Anybody in this section had salvation on Thursday? Ms. Giselle? One for that. Two. Two. Miss Ann? One. Um, anybody? For that? Three. Anybody else in this section? That row? All right. This section? One. 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 See that hand? One. One. All right. Good. Anybody? Right here? How many do you see? One. One. Okay. Anybody else in this section for Thursday? All right. This section? Thursday? Pastor Logan. Pastor Logan. Okay. And one on Thursday? Okay. Good. Two, two on Thursday. All right. Amen. Anybody else here? Okay. Last section. Anybody for Thursday? Okay. All right. How about Friday? This section. Three on Friday. All right. One, one. Three. Three. Two. Two. One. Ten. One. All right. Anybody on the over there? Okay. Anybody here? Thursday. This side here. That's first. Is that one? That's one. Is that one? All right. Very simple. Ah, so group two. Two. You guys? One. One. Two. Two. Okay. Anybody? Okay. <coughs> Friday, I would have one. Friday, I would have one. Okay, no problem. Friday, three. Three? Okay. The 
Doesn't John? Two. 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 All right, anybody else here? The third, the Friday, Friday, Friday? Anybody in Friday? Two? Two. Two. How many, Mr. Three. Three? Okay. Anybody else in this section? Yes, sir. Two. One? Two. All right. Anybody else here? Okay. Pastor Anderson, two? Anybody else over here? Two? All right, good. All right, well, we'll, we'll tally these up and uh, we'll, we'll give you a total. Uh, we'll, we'll do this again at the 2 p.m. service for the Salvation Tour uh, this morning and then we'll have a total for the conference, but uh, not very good at math, but it looks like a lot, so then. Uh, okay, let me go. I'm sorry, I don't know if Tyler's here. Is Tyler Baker here? He had one also. He had one. What day was that? Yesterday. Yesterday? Okay, thank you. Appreciate it. All right, now, real quickly, and I don't want to take too much time from Brother Gary, but... Uh, for those of you that have, are not familiar with this, I know we are having soul winners coming in. I just want to make sure you, you understand what we're doing. When Brother Derek's done preaching, we're going to separate into groups. And we're, um, we're, we're basically asking the single ladies to meet on this side. And my wife is going to partner you up and send you out. We'll have the single guys meet in this section. And Brother Al and Brother Second will partner you up and send you out. And then I need the couples in this section. And uh, I will partner you up and send you out. And, and I just want to write, it's not a, like a... It doesn't matter if you're married or whatever. I, what we mean by single is if you're a lady, you're by yourself. Your husband's not with you. Just meet with the lady so we can partner you with another lady. Um, if you're a guy here, you're married, but your wife's not here, that's fine. Just be in the single guys group. We'll partner you up with other guys. And then the couples, we just try to send a husband with a husband and a wife with a wife and not separate the couples from each other. So if you're together and you're both uh, going so many, meet in this section and we will partner you up and send you out. What you're going to get is a soul winning packet, and uh, basically what that will be is there will be a page with directions from the church building to the location that we want you to go soul winning. If you have a GPS, you can just type in the location, but if you don't, we got the directions there for you. On the second page, you will have a map, and it'll have a highlighted section, and uh, when you basically want you to do the highlighted section, there's an X. X is where the map uh, takes you to. And uh, we just want you to do as much of, the, of it as you can. If you can finish it, great. If you can't finish it, just t uh, try to mark off where you ended on the map and maybe like the last address or something like that. You may be sent to an apartment complex, and I don't have one of those up here, but basically you'll have directions. And instead of a map of the street we want you to do, you'll have an actual map of the complex. And you'll have all the apartment buildings in that complex. They'll have their numbers or their designations. And on your map, we will highlight the buildings we want you to do. It's very important that you only do the buildings we want you to do because we're sending other soul owners to that same complex and they're doing other buildings in that same complex. They've got a map that has different buildings highlighted. So we're trying to not overlap each other and, and, and uh, just waste time that way. So uh, you'll get a map. And, and all you have to do is when you finish knocking every door in one building, just cross that building off, move on to the next. If you don't finish all the buildings, that's fine. Uh, just uh, let us know where you went to, and then we'll recirculate that for our soul winners uh, at another time. If you have maps, uh, I need you to get those to Brother Stucky uh, just sometime you know, before you leave. And if you have uh, converts that are maybe someone that you, you want somebody to follow up with them, please get that to Brother Stucky uh, before you leave. You'll all be getting a card. If you get somebody saved and they seem like interested in coming to church or something like that, Get their information. If you have, uh, if you go into an apartment complex, our van picks people up in those complexes. So if somebody needs a ride, just say, hey, we'll, we'll have the church van come pick you up. Just get, get their name, address, phone number, and we'll follow up with them in regards to that. If you've had a convert this week who you said they wanted a ride, make sure you get that to Brother Sucky so you can call them this afternoon and set up a ride for that. And don't forget on your way out, grab a Bible to the City. This is the, the uh, gospel. Uh, presentation in nine different languages, and you just use it as a resource to be able to give out if you're not able to preach the gospel, you're not able to finish. If you haven't gone through uh, formal sewing training, we have sewing seminar DVDs back there. Ten lessons. If we take you from how to knock on doors to how to get a, a convert to church, and it, it, it's a good tool. If you haven't uh, ever gone through a structured training, please grab one on your way out there completely free. I think those are all of the announcements we have for now, so we're going to have to Gary come up and uh, preach for us this morning. Let's go to Acts chapter 16. 
Acts chapter 16, verse 30, and call those messages and thy house. Acts chapter 16, verse 30, the Bible reads, And brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord, and to all that were in his house. Go ahead and pray, dear God, I think for this opportunity to preach your word. Pray that that all be understandable and effective, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen. The context of this passage is Paul and Silas are in Philippi. Paul and Silas are in a jail in Philippi, and they're preaching the gospel to the jailer. I would imagine the apostle Paul is the greatest soul winner who's ever lived. I would imagine the apostle Paul probably reaped more souls than any person who's ever reaped. I would imagine the apostle Paul probably sold, sowed more seeds than any person who's ever sowed. I would imagine the apostle Paul is the greatest soul winner who's ever lived. Why was he so effective? Why was he strong, strong? Number one, he labored more than anybody else. Number two, he spoke a lot of languages. Number three, look at his mindset. Verse 31, and they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. He's just starting to preach the gospel, and he, he lands his sea saying, In thy house. In the back of his mind, he's thinking myself, to, to himself, I need to get this guy saved, and I need to get his whole family saved. Amen. Amen. We need to have the same mindset of getting the entire household saved. Let me tell you something. If you get someone saved and they want you to get their entire household saved, you're a great soul winner. If you get someone saved at work and they want to bring you home to get, preach the whole gospel of their whole household, you're a great soul winner. If you get someone saved who's at work and he wants to bring you home to preach the whole gospel in his own household and you're in jail, you're a great soul winner. Like I said, first point, we need to have the same mindset of getting the entire household saved. And it worked. Verse 32. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord and to all that were in his house. Paul did not go to the man's house to get his wounds cleansed. Paul did not go to the man's house to get a fresh cooked meal. Paul did not go to the man's house to baptize people. He went to the man's house to preach his gospel to everybody in his house. And those things just fell in place. Amen. They just fell in place. The second point is it takes a certain amount of wisdom to get into someone's house. The Bible says the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he that when his souls is wise. Not only does it take a certain amount of wisdom to have a gospel presentation to get someone saved, not only does it take a certain amount of wisdom to get someone to want to hear the gospel, but it takes a certain amount of wisdom to get into someone's house to preach the gospel to their family. Years ago, I knocked on a, a door in uh, Central Phoenix, and a 15-year-old girl answered the door, and she let me in her house. And uh, she sat in her, at her computer desk in the corner of her living room. I gave her the gospel. She was extremely receptive. About three or four minutes into the presentation, his, her younger sister walked in. But instead of walking over and looking over my shoulder like what a lot of people do, a lot of kids do, she just went in the other corner of the living room and sat at her computer desk with her back turned in. So I'm thinking while I'm giving the gospel, how do I get this other girl the gospel as well? So I give the gospel to the older sister. She believed on Lord Jesus Christ, called on in faith. And I asked her, pretending that the other sister wasn't there, just like she was pretending I wasn't there. And I said, is there anybody in your house you want me to tell this to? And she went like this. <laughs> and she pointed her younger sister. So that gave me the ice breaker. I just walked up to her and got her saved. I will tell you this. That kind of passive approach rarely happens. Nine out of time, ten times when I'm at someone's door and I get them saved. And I ask them, hey, is there anyone in your house I can preach this to? Because I see people in the house going back and forth. And a lot of times they'll say, oh, no, we're okay. Oh, no, they're too busy. Or no, they're Catholic. I think the reason why they say that is they don't want the persecution. Amen. Years ago, a salesman called me up on the phone. And he sold me a product over the phone. The guy was very professional. The guy had a great spiel. And he had a good product. And even after I gave him my credit card, I still felt good about the transaction. And at the end of all, he said, Garrett, how did I do? How's my professionalism? How's my approach? 
How is the product? I say, it was great. You did a great job. He said, hey, Gary, do me a favor. Why don't you give me the names and numbers of five of your friends and family, and I'll call them up. I'll give them the same presentation. I'll tell them about the same product, and they'll be just as happy as you. I said, no way. <laughs> no way. I'm not going to give out the phone number of my friends and family, have them come back and rip on me. Why did you give my number out to yourself? <laughs> I believe very strongly when we get someone saved, they like us a lot. They like our presentation a lot. They like the product a lot. They just got saved. They got joy in their hearts. But I would imagine when it comes to handing over their family or laying us in the door, they don't want the presentation. They don't want the people to rip on them. So typically when I'm at someone's door, I try a little more direct approach. I'll ask them, I'll say, hey, do you have any brothers or sisters in there? And they'll say, oh, yeah. And I'll say, hey, I just want to talk to your brother for a second. Let me just ask one single question before I leave. A lot of times I'll hear them walk up and say, the person say, hey, he just wants to ask you one question for a second. And the person will walk up. Or sometimes the mom will walk up, you know, kind of puzzled when I ask. And then oftentimes that's a lot more effective. The more effective approach is a lot of times if I see someone go back and forth twice, I'll say, hey, who's that guy in the red shirt? He looks familiar. What's his name? And they'll say, well, Mario. That's right, Mario. Let me ask you a question real quick. I tell you what, if someone goes back and forth twice, they look a lot more familiar the second time. <laughs> and I just came up with this idea. I haven't used it yet, but it worked great in Phoenix. Just hold up an empty water bottle and say, hey, can I just come in real quick? Just fill it up with tap water just in a second. And when you get in that door, it's like you're in a park. You just pick apart, you know, people as, as you can. It takes a certain amount of wisdom to get into someone's house. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter uh, 6. Second Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. You say, well, why do I need to get people's household saved? Why should I get in their house? Why should I even bother the Bible says, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial? For what part hath he that believeth with an end of it The number one reason why I want to get the household saved is I want unity in that house. If, a mar if I'm talking to a married man, I want his wife to get saved so there's unity. If I'm talking to a brother, I want her, his sister to get saved so there's unity. I mean, what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness? What communion has light with darkness? And what concord has Christ with Belial? I want as much unity in that house as I can. Amen. The second reason is I want to minimize the confusion. If I get a young man saved, I don't want his parent to be puffed up when I walk away and say, you have to keep the commandments. Or I've read the Bible. You can't live however you want. Yeah. You know, if they have that kind of issue, I want to experience that issue face to face so I can cut them down to pieces in front of the new convert. I don't want confusion to be in that household. Or at the very least, I want the parent to try to lie and say, hey, I don't have time to, you know, for that, so that, they're, so that the new convert can realize their parent is, number one, not saved, and number two, their parent is not an expert on religion. I want to minimize the confusion with that new convert. And the third point is I want to protect that convert. Amen. Yeah. I don't want persecution there. One time I was giving the gospel to a young man, he's probably about 14 or 15, and I heard a whole bunch of flack on the other side of the door. I figured it was his older brother. And he was causing a lot of intervention. But, but fortunately, the guy hung on, and he prayed and believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. And when he finished, I said, who's that guy making all the noise behind the door? Is that your brother? And he said, oh, yeah, that's my brother. I said, hey, what's his name? Mario. I just called out, Mario, let me talk to you for a second. So he came around the corner, and I said, hey, I don't want to get in your face, but I just want to invite you to church. And I tried my spiel on him. One time it worked. So here he was real, he's adding a lot of persecution to his younger brother. Now he's saved. Another time it didn't work. The guy came around the corner and said, I'm an atheist. I said, what do you mean you're an atheist? Where did this come from? Where did this mountain come from? Where did these trees come from? He said, I don't know. And I said, you better figure it out, because before you get to judgment day, you better have some good questions for you, otherwise you're going to go to hell. Yeah, yeah. And then you know, I, I softened him up. I said, hey, before I leave, can I just give you some verses? He said, no, I'm okay. I said, hey, I don't want you to go to hell. If you want to find out sometime, just come to my church or just turn to your younger brother and 
he'll do you safe. So I soften it down a little bit. Yeah, so the title of this message is, And Thy House. We need to have the same mindset as Apostle Paul. When we get someone say we need to get in the house as as many people as we can see. Amen. Number two, it takes some wisdom to get in that house. And number three, why do we do it? So we can bring unity to the house. So we can minimize the confusion. And number three, so we can protect the convert. Let's go ahead and pray. Dear God, I thank you for this opportunity to preach your word. Lord, I pray that you be upon us. Lord, I pray that we preach with great boldness. Lord, and Lord, I pray that we do see households get saved today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you very much, Brother Gary. Thank you, Pastor Anderson, for letting us have Brother Gary for a week here. He's been doing a great job, and I've been very impressed with him. We're coming out soul winning this morning. We're driving, my, my family and I are meeting and driving out here, and I, I see Brother Garrett walking from his hotel. He's got his briefcase. He's walking to church, and so why don't you, you know, I think myself, uh, that's the kind of, that's the kind of mission I want to support. Amen. Amen. I didn't have a ride, and we kind of just forgot about him, and then gave him a ride, and uh, he, he's coming to preach. You're, you know, you're probably wondering, why don't you stop and uh, give him a ride? Because we're running late. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, Brother Garrett, we appreciate you. Thank you very much. All right, so don't forget, single ladies here, single men here, couples here. Hey, you couples, you guys are, you, you guys are fighting on vacation or whatever, just... Figure out singleness too. You can do that over here too. Uh, all right, let's pray and then we'll split the group. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this group. Father, we love you. I pray you bless us without so many questions. I pray. Amen. 195 soul winners this morning. Yes. 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 Yes.